this or other data. However, we are now looking much more closely at wind and wave technology to future-proof us in the event that PV cell design cannot keep up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very large area and, and it's very detailed, which I have skimmed over to highlight a few areas that we might start thinking about now. I do not profess to be an expert, but the signs are there. And as a prudent mariner, and as prudent mariners amongst us, we should not ignore them. The IPCC reports need monitoring and are probably the most authoritative, albeit conservative, report for global climate change. And they have no axe to grind or hidden agendas. Their four yearly reports will enable us all to monitor and consider suitable advice for issues affecting all ATOM providers. However, may I suggest that IALA monitor the next IPCC report due in 2013 for emerging trends and summarize these for members to assess. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Really food for thought. And I'm just wondering, while Jim was speaking, how much did we contribute to the loss of ice in our drinks during this week? The next speaker is Jean-Charles Leclerc. And Rear Admiral Jean-Charles Leclerc obtained a first-class first master certificate in 1969, where after he joined the French Maritime Affairs Administration. From 1989 to 1994, he was the French permanent representative at IMO. Then he became and then he came back to the Ministry of Transport in Paris and became in charge of the Maritime Safety Department. Since 1998, he's a regular consultant for IMO and he has worked part-time for IALA as the accredited representative of IALA to IMO. Uh, Jean-Charles is also the Dean of the IALA Worldwide Academy since last year, 2009. The title of Jean-Charles' presentation is the Traffic Monitoring Along the African Coasts Reasons and method. Thank you, John. John. Thank you. I am back. This time only with my glass of water, not with syrup. So, my uh, presentations regard the uh, traffic mo monitoring along the African coast. Uh, this week, you have heard uh, and saw a lot of uh, very beautiful. Uh, tools, things, systems, and uh, uh, the world is changing rapidly, but uh, hopefully Africa should not be uh, left behind. The new obligations, but also these uh, new tools, it's maybe the opportunity for the African countries to reconsider their policy regarding the safety of navigations or sometimes the lack of policy in safety of navigation. By, uh, by experience, I know that not only in Africa, but in many countries, the authorities do not know really what is the traffic along their coast. They have not this knowledge, uh, despite the fact that to uh, deal with the risk uh, of navigations along the coast, the first thing is to know is what is the risk, so it means what, what is the traffic along the coast. It is uh, here that the new system, AIS, it's new because it's only 10 years old, the new system, AIS, it's really a revolution for everyone. And uh, th this fantastic tool is not very, uh, very, very costly to implement and it's a chance for every cost, cost, uh, cost countries just to be able to implement it. The history of the uh, uh, knowledge of the traffic along the coast is started by just uh, the eyes and the binoculars and in many places still the eyes and binoculars to know what passes along the coast. Some radars help to see longer, but not with the details of the traffic. Mandatory ship reporting, 
adopted by uh, IMO in the 90s gave more opportunity to have a better knowledge of what kind of ships are passing along the, the country and uh, AES arrived with the revolution. The implementation of AES today is uh, complete and just a reminding because uh, I'm not sure that all countries uh, implement AES as SOLAS require because of course for the uh, international navigation it's very simple and uh, if a ship is, a solar ship is not uh, uh, equipped with uh, an IES, the port state control could uh, regress the situation. But you have to remind that uh, the national navigation is also uh, in obligation, some ships of national navigation are also to be equipped with the AES, the cargo ships, but also all small passenger ships navigating along your coast should be equipped with uh, with AES. What is important is to realize that nowadays it's very difficult for the authorities to say that uh, I didn't know, I know the situations, I uh, was not aware uh, before the accident happened. The tool exists and uh, uh, as it is not very expensive to implement, it should be implemented everywhere. AES, LRIT, and tomorrow AES satellite offer many functionalities and can be used to improve safety, security, protection of marine environment, and not less important, maritime traffic efficiency. Uh, I like this, this idea uh, just to remind you that when you took flights 15 or 20 years ago, when you arrive at your destination, you stay just flying over an airport during uh, minutes, sometimes hours, but since uh, 10 or 15 years ago, you arrive and usually the, the, the plane uh, land very quickly. It's because when uh, the plane leaves the, the, the previous airport, it cannot leave the previous airport without a slot to uh, land at the next airport. We can, because the, the air traffic system organize the uh, area and traffic, uh, it's now possible to do that. But why not to do the same with the uh, maritime traffic? You can perfectly imagine that uh, in the future, the uh, uh, ships, before, long before arriving in the port, will be aware when a berth will be ready for, for, for her, and in that uh, case, it will be possible for the master to adapt the speed and so on. Uh, when the uh, monitoring of traffic will be global, for instance, through Ireland, it will be possible to do that. And because uh, more than anyone else activity, the maritime world is global, Africa should not stay apart from this crucial revolution for maritime navigation. This uh, plot of uh, the maritime traffic around the globe is uh, speak for itself and uh, if you look uh, more closely to the African country you can see that there is a lot of traffic passing along going to Africa and uh, it is obvious that if there is no monitoring of traffic just in Africa it will be a very big problem not only for Africa but for the maritime world in general. AES and the monitoring of, the tra of traffic along the coast, it's an obligation since 2000 when uh, IO has adopted the new SOLAS uh, regulation 30 of chapter 5 and also the regulation 12 of cha chapter 5 on BTS. It's an obligation for the contracting government to provide the edge to navigation or the VTS according to the traffic and to the risk. And to evaluate the traffic and, or, and the risk, it is necessary to have a good knowledge of that. And the tool to do that, to evaluate that, is the AES. Of course, all of that is to avoid accidents like this. You have heard, not only at this conference, but the, the, the uh, conference before, uh, the VTS symposium before, all the, used, all the possible use of shore-based AES. 
just recapitulate some of them. And uh, in particular, the, uh, it provides, the AES provides a very good tool for risk analysis, for planning, for marine investigation, uh, marine accident investigation. 